Hey YouTube, it's Roman. Today I want to talk about portfolio rebalancing and why it's so important. Uh, a good example would be if you had a retirement portfolio, you know, a lot of times we think we can just kind of set and forget. Maybe we're just buying uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of SPY, a lot of the, uh, the VTI, VOO, but uh, something that you really have to consider is the risk profile of that portfolio as it evolves through time. And this is uh, a video that's going to visually uh, explain everything and mathematically explain everything. So let's just go ahead and dive right in. Okay, so let's start by importing all the packages we need. We're gonna say import Y finance as YF, import numpy as MP, import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. And now we are going to establish a portfolio. So I wouldn't recommend this portfolio, um, but, but what we're gonna do is we're going to build a portfolio consisting of just Amazon and Apple. So we're gonna say Amazon is equal to YF ticker AMZN, and then Apple is equal to YF ticker APL. And then we are going to go ahead and get the historic close and return for Amazon and Apple. So I'm gonna say AMZN close is equal to amzn.history start. We're gonna go back to 2020. And we're gonna do the same thing for Apple. Start going back to 2020. Okay, cool. Now we're gonna to need to get the returns. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to say percent change. And then I'm gonna get everything from the second row onward because you know the first row doesn't have uh, something to compare the previous day to because we're going to uh, January 1st, 2020. We don't have that day before. Um, so it's gonna be an NA value. So we're just gonna do percent change one going forward, and then these are going to be the returns. Okay, cool. So now we have all the data that we need to go ahead and build a portfolio and visualize that portfolio as it evolves throughout time. Now what we're gonna to wanna to do is establish two vectors. One is going to consist of the returns for Amazon and Apple and one is going to consist of the closes for each of them, so the closing prices. So we can say returns is equal to MP array, so we're gonna create a NumPy array, and we are going to take the AMZN rets.values, and then the AAPL rets.values, and then we could do returns.shape to make sure we have the correct shape. So we have two stocks, Amazon and Apple, and then 581 days of returns for those two. We could do the same thing with the close. So we could say closes is equal to MP array, AMZN close dot values, AAPL close dot values. And then we could do closes dot shape, shape, and we have two stocks and 582 days of closing prices. Uh, obviously we lose that first day of returns, but nevertheless, this is sufficient for what we're trying to do. Time to actually build this portfolio now. So we can say PVAL is equal to 10,000. So not, not the statistical PVAL, but our portfolio value. Uh, and then we can say our weight in Amazon is equal to 50%, and then our weight in Apple is also going to be equal to 50%. Now, to compute the portfolio value on any given day, what we can do is we can store each of these weights in a vector and then compute the dot product with our returns, add one, and then take the cumulative product and then we can visualize the value of this portfolio on any day going back to 2020. So let's do that. Let's just say port weights are equal to MP array. We'll do AMZNW and then AAPLW. So that's our Amazon and Apple weight respectively. So then what we're gonna do is we are going to say 
plt.plot, mp.cumprod, mp. Dot dot <laughs> and then we're going to do the port weight with the returns we're going to add one and we are going to get our portfolio value uh, going back to 2020 now this is on a dollar scale so we actually have to multiply by our portfolio like value which is 10,000 so I'll say times p -val. And that'll rescale it to the appropriate um, to the appropriate value. So essentially, what we're saying is, okay, cool. You know, if we were to purchase, um, if we were to purchase, you know, 50% of our portfolio in Amazon, 50% of our portfolio in Apple, and then we were to rebalance on a daily basis, meaning that we take the returns of our portfolio and then add it to our portfolio value and then recompute uh, a new weight in Amazon and Apple. And then we do this on a daily rolling basis. Uh, this is the value of our portfolio today. And, you know, Hey, it looks, it looks pretty good. Um, but yeah. Okay. So, so that's what we're doing here. We, we came up with this, this, um, this rebalanced portfolio value, but you know, we, we don't rebalance our portfolio every day. And that's for a variety of reasons, right? We're, we're not going to rebalance our portfolio on a daily basis in terms of, of, of a, a retail investor, right? Where we're talking about somebody maybe saving for retirement or, you know, they're, they're not a professional asset manager. Um, you know, so like, like, why? Why are we rebalancing this portfolio? What happens if we don't? Let's, let's actually take a look at what happens if we don't rebalance this portfolio. And we can do that by simulating a one-time purchase. So for this one-time purchase, we're just going to assume that we can have fractional shares because that's what we did in our, our previous portfolio here with continuous daily rebalancing. Um, so let's, let's go ahead and do this. What, what is this going to look like? Well, we're going to have to purchase 50% uh, of our portfolio in Amazon, 50% of our portfolio in Apple. To do that, we can just say AMZN shares is equal to 5,000. So our portfolio value, 10,000 times the 50% weight divided by AMZN close dot values zero. So that first value um, in, you know, January, 2020, and then we are going to be able to get the portfolio value every single day up until this, uh, current point in time. So we're going to do the same thing for Apple 5,000 divided by a PL close dot values zero. We can get the value of this portfolio over time by taking the dot product of a vector containing these shares for a one-time purchase with the series of prices for those two stocks. So we can say port shares is equal to MP array. And we can take our Amazon shares and our Apple shares and put them right into that vector. And then now we can just do the dot product as before, but instead in the return space, we're going to be operating in the price space. So I can say plt.plot MP dot dot. We're going to do our port shares and then our closes. Uh, and then that's going to be it. That's how we can visualize this portfolio. Now I also want to add the original portfolio so we can visualize both of them on the same chart. And then I'm going to add a legend so that we can discern the difference between the two. So one is rebalanced and then one is a one-time purchase. Let's check out these two portfolios as they compare to one another. Now, if you take a look on a surface level, you'll see these two these two lines look very similar, right? We have our, our blue rebalance line and then our orange one-time purchase line, uh, each representing one portfolio, one where we rebalance daily, one where we just purchase, set, and forget January 1st, 2020. Why is this significant? Well, you know, you may be looking at this and say, hey, Roman, like this, this isn't significant. Like these two, these two lines are so close together, who cares? Well, you know, fair enough, but keep in mind, we only have two assets in this portfolio and these lines have deviations from one another. Now, I'm not saying you should go out of your way and rebalance your, your portfolio continuously, daily, whatever. But what I am saying is we need to consider the implications of not rebalancing. And, and what, what is that? Well, what is the space between these two lines? What does that represent? And what we should care about is that that space represents 
a divergence from the target weight of our portfolio for each asset in our portfolio, meaning the space between those two lines represents a divergence from a 50% weight in Apple, 50% weight in Amazon. What does this mean for us? Well, the entire risk profile of our portfolio changes. Now, this is important because this is a, a two-year period. This is, you know, 2022 today going back to 2020. This is a two-year period and our risk profile changes dramatically. And I'll show you in a moment quantitatively how much you changed by if we just did a one-time purchase. But what about a 30-year portfolio? What about a 60-year portfolio? And more importantly, <laughs> what about what about the risk profile of those portfolios? You know, if, if we purchased, you know, maybe 100,000 units of, of X, Y, and Z, maybe you have even more than, than two or three indexes. Maybe you have like several facets of the portfolio, maybe a medium long-term bonds, maybe you have commodity indices, who knows, who knows what your portfolio consists of, right? But that retirement portfolio is gonna be subject to having these deviations from, from the initial targets. And that's exactly what I'm trying to illustrate here. That is, that is exactly what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to highlight and, and why portfolio rebalancing is so important on say like even a monthly basis because your exposure to a particular asset in your portfolio with a one-time purchase could triple, quadruple. If you're in tech, who knows how high that could go but you need to consider the exposure to each individual asset as it pertains to your initial expectation of target weights um, of, the, of your assets in that portfolio. All right, what the heck am I talking about? Quantitatively, let's go ahead and take a look. So we're going to assign that one-time purchase series, uh, that, that portfolio value, the orange series to a variable. So we're gonna say one time is equal to MP dot port shares and then the closes. Okay, so we can take a look at the latest value of that portfolio by saying one time minus one. We get 18,552, so that's that point right there. We can also, because we have a fixed amount of stake in Apple and Amazon, compute that portfolio value by saying new PVAL is equal to the last price of Amazon, which is going to be closes zero minus one times the share that we have in Amazon plus closes one. So that's going to be the latest price in Apple times a APL share. So those are our fixed weights in Amazon and Apple as computed up here. And we are going to be taking the latest price for Apple and the latest price for Amazon multiplying each of those by the, the respective weights and then summing them. So we should get the exact same value as the one time uh, portfolio series that we have right there. Uh, and we do, and this is by construction, right? So this is just the dot product way of doing things. This is the matrix way of doing things. This is the essentially by hand way of doing things. So you could look at this as the last uh, entry in this, this vector, this one time vector. Um, okay, cool. So now that we have these two values, we can go ahead and take a look at the percentage weight that we have in both Amazon and Apple at this point, at this latest point in time. To do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the stake in Amazon, for example, and I'm going to divide it by the new value of our portfolio. And if you take a look, we have 40% of our portfolio in Amazon. But what about Apple? Well, we could just do one minus that value because we have two assets, or we can compute it by hand as well by saying the latest price in Apple times the shares in Apple divided by the P value. So this is going to be, you know, 0 0.59 whatever, um, and that is our weight in Apple. If you remember, <laughs> our initial weight in each of these assets was 50%, but, but now we have 60% of our portfolio in 
in Apple and 40% in Amazon. This is a big deviation from our targets. We have 40% in Amazon and 60% in Apple. And this is over two years with two assets. What if you had a retirement portfolio with, you know, modern, modern portfolio theory says that you're effectively diversified approximately 30, uh, 30 assets in a portfolio, right? So what if you had 30 assets in your portfolio? And you took a look at these weights after two years and, and everything's topsy turvy, right? And, and like I said, like, what about a retirement portfolio over 30, 50, 60 years with who knows how many assets? You know, these are going to change significantly over time. Now, the, the moral of the story is you want to maintain the, the target weights in your portfolio if, if you have, say, like, 30% in, in bonds, 40% in, in equities, and then the rest in say like a blend of maybe like safe haven gold or commodities or something, you're gonna wanna rebalance that portfolio on say like a monthly basis so that you can maintain those, those targets and, and the risk profile of your portfolio. You don't wanna be overexposed to any uh, one of your assets in your portfolio, especially when that wasn't your intention uh, to begin with. I hope you enjoyed this video. This was meant to be sort of an example as to, to why you should care about portfolio rebalancing. I think a lot of, of quantitative finance and finance, a lot of, a lot of theoretical concepts kind of get lost in the, the what you should just be doing or what people do or what asset managers do. And you kind of lose the, you know, how does this affect me or, or why should I care? And and this is meant to show you, you know, why you should care because the, the risk profile of your portfolio changes over time. If you have a retirement portfolio and you're 30% in bonds, 40% in equities, and maybe 30% in combination of gold and commodities, who knows? You know, if, if you have that retirement portfolio and, and you just try to set and forget, then those values, just as they have here over two years, are going to change over time. And if you have more assets, then there's just going to be more change. So, you know, hopefully this was an intuitive example uh, as to, to why we should care about portfolio rebalancing. As always, if there are any comments, uh, any questions, please leave them below. I'm, I'm happy to, to get to them to answer any, um, answer any questions. You can always shoot me an email if you have any specific questions, uh, any suggestions. Always happy to, uh, to listen to, to future video, video suggestions or any particular topics anybody would like to see. Um, now, now the actual execution of, of rebalancing, uh, that, that can be a, a future video in itself. Um, so if that's something you'd like to see, leave it below and I'll, I'll be happy to make that as well. But uh, until then, thanks for watching and I'll, I'll see you in the next one.